So let's begin and uh, let's talk about back to school. Okay. Um, everyone who's uh, enrolled for the webinar should receive automatically a certificate of participation and a webinar handout um, in the next few days. If you don't receive us, there's that website there, formazione at mlaworld.com. Or to be honest, if you even send it just to webinar at mlaworld.com, I monitor that as well. Um, that will uh, give you a handout which has all the important information, most, most of the text, and uh, some worksheets and a lot of useful links that uh, if you're interested in this topic, um, there's some other ideas there. So I think it's a really useful thing. So if you don't receive that automatically, please just uh, drop me an email and I'll get it to you as soon as possible. Okay. Um, so it is that time of year when students in Italy are heading back to school. Okay, So uh, I think it's worthwhile that we uh, have a think about how we're going to set the tone for the start of the year, get students comfortable in their English lessons. So, uh, you know, um, I think we should be able to give you some ideas for this one. This is an opportunity to draw on students' summer experiences while also checking their levels and even refreshing their English after the break because they have had uh, a long break. So let's ease them in slowly. Yeah, I think it's a, you know, a bit of warming up is always worthwhile. I mean, hopefully if they've travelled with us, maybe they're coming back with a higher level of English, but often uh, they might just have uh, come a little bit rusty during the summer break. Uh, let us know in the chat. Uh, how, if you've got some ways that you start your first lessons, what do you do? Do you have something that you do every year with your students, whether they're new students joining you for the first time or whether they're students you had last year and you're just seeing them back after the summer? Let us know in the chat and I'll be interested to know. We, as always, we have some objectives here. So um, the first one there is uh, we hope by the end of this webinar you should be better able to exploit holiday experiences to provide opportunities for speaking activities in class. So using the fact that they've been on a summer break to, to give yourself some of the content. Encourage students to take responsibility for their learning environment. So really give them ownership over what they will be learning throughout this academic year. Mm, I think this is sort of a, uh, a theme of these webinars to make students a bit more responsible for their own learning. So you know, this is, could be an objective that you might often find here. Um, and also, obviously, we want to always create some uh, imaginative speaking and writing activities that will uh, really engage the students' curiosity about their classmates, um, about their teacher maybe as well. Okay and about the things they're going to be learning during the year. Um, one game that you can play, I'm sure many people will be familiar with this, but uh, if you're not, it might be a really useful thing to do, is the two truths and a lie game. Okay? It's usually best played with students who aren't so familiar with each other. So it might be something that you play when you've got a new class um, that, that you know, totally new, not just coming back after the summer. Okay? Um, perhaps you know this game. Okay? Um, I'll describe how it works. Okay? Students have to write, okay, come up with three sentences about themselves. Two of them must be true and one must be false. Okay? Um, in this case, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, they, they, well, in fact, they don't tell you which one is true one which one which ones are true which ones are false but the students after coming up with these three sentences they read these in front of the class and the rest of the class have to guess which is the lie okay um it sounds simple but there's a couple of things you have to remember okay obviously i think something that's always important after students have um have been given time to compose something that they're going to read in front of the class it's always important that you monitoring monitor them and uh, make sure that their sentences are as correct as possible. So the grammar wise, uh, you know, pronunciation may be another issue, but uh, you know, you want to see this as an opportunity to for them to demonstrate 
um, their English in front of other people. So, you know, you can do a bit of error correction there. Okay? Um, encourage students to mix up the order. A lot of, we call it two truths and a lie, but we don't want it necessarily in that order. Okay, so um, if everyone puts a lie last, then uh, it's going to be a very short game. Okay, not that they can't put it last, you know, but uh, you may want to um, read out that rule to them. Okay, um, something that students may not quite get is that uh, we don't want them to write things that are quite obviously false. Okay, some student who writes something like "I have long hair." If I were to write that, I think you'd probably work out very quickly which the lie, which is the lie. Okay. Um, the other thing is that uh, some students are bound to know each other, okay, even if they're new students for the for the class. So it might be best that they try to keep things that uh, a good percentage of the students know about them. Um, you know, move on to something else. So if uh, one student saying I have two brothers, then his best friend in the class will probably be um, uh, very easily we will spot that as either true or false. So what you can even do is ask the students to nominate people that they don't want to play in that round. Okay. Um, ideally, the fact should be interesting. Okay. And the ob uh, the objective is to make the other students choose incorrectly. So to be able to come up with, with things that uh, sound true but are not. Okay. And to be honest, also the other way around, things that are true that may sound like a lie, something surprising about themselves. Okay. Um, Josephina says she plays it, and uh, I think uh, she's come up with something really good that I didn't mention, that it's always good for the teacher themselves to demonstrate this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is a obvious thing. It's not, not fair to make the students do it without you doing it as well, and what better way to demonstrate how it works. Right. Um, if you another go to, to class, sorry. Another way to to motivate them to to kind of put down something really interesting or a little bit tricky is to make it into a competition. Students yeah. always love a bit of competition. What you can do too as a quick way of doing it, instead of going around asking everyone, "What do you think?" One, two, three. Get them to hold up a finger. You know, one finger, two fingers, three fingers. Um, uh, in for what for which one they think is the lie. Okay, because you know, that'll be the odd one out. Okay. Um, one thing that's really um, important about this, it can be extended. In fact, I would uh, recommend that you extend it to a certain degree because it's a great way to find out interesting things about the students. Okay. So if a student says, you know, I play three musical instruments and that turns out to be true, then Obviously, you know, you'd want to find out what those three instruments are. If they say, you know, I have a pet, then you might want to find out what that pet is, things like that. So you could encourage also the students to ask, ask follow-up questions. It's a good activity to get students in the habit of, uh, you know, uh, using their English to, to meet people, to, to do a bit of small talk with people they've just met, you know, in case that they're going to... Uh, be, be studying abroad or uh, even just meeting people who, who are speaking English. We I think thought that's what we makes might... it such a great Sorry. exercise in the, um, in, the, in the first class with the new classmates as well, because they are getting to know each other when you've got those new classmates together. Mm, exactly. So it's, it's doing a lot of things at the same time. So that's why I think it's a really good fun thing to do. Obviously, it can fall a bit flat if the students know each other too well, but you know, don't worry, we've got other ideas for students that are coming back after summer break. Um, let us know in the chat if you have two truths and a lie. So, you know, feel free to write one, two, three. It might be best if you write them all in one message. Okay? If you write them in different messages, it's going to be a bit mixed up with all the different people doing it at the same time. But uh, let us know and uh, we can have a guess. Okay. Um, we thought we might try this uh, with Kathy. So Kathy's going to tell us two truths and a lie, not necessarily in yeah. that order. Okay. So in the manner of, you know, giving an example, as, as we said before, we thought we'd give, give this example to you guys. So number one, I spent my holidays at the seaside. Number two, I visited a different continent. 
Number three, I took up a new water sport. Okay, so write in the chat which one you think is false, okay, which one is not true. So two of those things are true. Okay, um, write the one you think is not true. Okay. I you think... can see as well that I kind of um, I kept all of my my facts to to one topic, and so you can kind of restrict this activity a little bit if you want to really make them focus on their holidays if that's the topic of the lesson, or even restrict it a little bit more and say, okay, you have to use some phrases that are really specific to holidays, things like um, at the seaside, spend time, uh, get delayed, go sightseeing. And so you might want to elicit some of those phrases before you do this activity and put them on your, on your whiteboard or your blackboard uh, just to get them to review some of that, that vocabulary that Alexis from, from the year before. One of these things too could be um, for students who know each other well, it could be a bit more specific. So like this about what they did in the summer, about where they went. You know, if someone went to um, Sicily in a town in Sicily, then they could give three facts about that town or three facts about their typical day on holidays. So it doesn't need to be so general about their lives or even about their full holidays and to be honest you can even play this about other things as in fact we might be looking at next week i think uh, our colleague uh, becky's got an idea for this true two truths and a lie um for clill okay? and being able to incorporate it into a subject that you've studied and you could actually you know do it about some give students something to study and they've got to come up with two think two real facts anyway i don't want to step on hers um it looks like you've played it quite well kathy because we've got people guessing one two and three okay? mm. so this is really it's my poker what, what, face it's okay? all about keeping a good poker face okay so um do you want to reveal the, uh, the, the fact that is not actually a fact that isn't true is number two. I didn't visit a different continent, but I did spend my holidays at the seaside and I did take up a new water sport. You obviously I tried at least. I tried. I what is the new water sport that you tried? <laughs> I tried um, surfing. Oh, ah, okay. Where was that? Portugal. Nice. And how it did was. you go? I mean, I, I, I spent a lot of the time not on the board, I have to admit, but it was really good fun, battling okay. with waves. Okay, nice, nice. Um, and see, you know, as you can see, that that would be an obvious question to follow up with that. Um, I visited a different continent. You can even go on with that. You know, um, Cathy, have you visited other continents in the past? Yeah, I have done. So yep. I've lots of time in Asia. It's just a great, yep. great place to visit on holiday. Okay, great. Um, there's a few other people that have um, done these two truths and a lie in the chat. I'm sorry, it's just uh, there's quite a few people chatting. So Sylvia's got one. I didn't go on holiday anywhere. I watched a lot of movies in English and I made friends with some Portuguese teachers. Um, I'm going to guess that, uh, ooh, which one? Um, I don't think you made friends with some Portuguese teachers. Oh, see, one and three are conflicting, but yeah. I was going to go with number one. Yeah, that was nice. Sylvia, which one uh, was uh, false? Okay. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on. You can keep posting those in the chat if you like. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, Sylvia said Kathy got it right. Okay. So, uh, Sylvia, one didn't point. is it you didn't go on holiday? Okay. Is that what, what number one was? Okay. So she did go on holiday, okay, just as well. Okay. I imagine, but I am guessing that she was also in Portugal. Everyone seems to be going to Portugal this, this year. Okay. Um, another thing we can do uh, sort of similar to this, okay, or maybe even as a follow-on, is uh, the classic activity, uh, which is what I did in my summer holidays. Now, you know, this is uh, something that I don't think you need to, to us to sort of uh, uh, tell us that that's a very common, tell you that that's, that's a very common activity to do on the first week or whatever after a summer holiday or even a Christmas holiday. But 
why not switch it up with a, with interviews or a survey? Okay. Um, in this way, the students come up with the topics, okay, the questions, and get some practice asking and answering questions. So, you know, instead of just writing what I did, they need to find out what their classmates did. Okay, so they can go through and write a few questions. We've um, on the next page, I think you'll see we've made some. Uh, we've made a uh, worksheet, but. Uh, they can write the questions. The teacher can come and check those questions to make sure that they're grammatically correct. You know, question formation is always something that uh, I think uh, students really need uh, a lot of help with. And uh, it's always good to get them practicing their own questions. And then uh, uh, get them to uh, ask other students, gives them a bit more control of the lesson. It, you know, goes the way they want to. It's, it's, them asking what they want to find out about their classmates. Really a nice way for the teacher as well to kind of go around and monitor and check in with, with their level of English because it's very, very hands off for the teacher. You're mm -hmm. essentially quiet and you're, and you're listening to them communicate with each other. Yeah, in fact, it's sort of what we always talk about is, uh, you know, teacher speaking time or talking time, you know, minimising that, letting the students take over a bit and also getting they can all be talking at the same time okay, or in pairs or whatever. What I sometimes do is get them, uh, uh, you know, in two rows and then they have to, you know, speak to the person in front of them and then after, you know, one minute you say, okay, move to your right. Okay, one row moves to their right, matches up with another person. Okay. Um, let us know in the chat if you've ever done any of these sort of survey activities, whether they're of this type or whether you've done other surveys. Okay? Um, it can be very useful. A couple of people are asking in the chat about uh, the, the slides and uh, recordings. Uh, just to let you know, uh, we don't give you the slides, but we will give you the webinar handout, which has all this information. Okay. Um, and it also has, as you can see, the worksheet uh, that we've designed there. There's another worksheet as, sheet as well. And then um, it's got a whole lot of other information on as well. So I think the worksheet, the, the, the handout will be even better than the slides. Um, also, if you check out MLA World, so look for those, um, those words on uh, YouTube. You'll find our um, channel on YouTube and uh, you'll find all our uh, webinars on there. So if you do, obviously you're here now, but if you uh, miss one in the future, you, they come on after a couple of days. Okay. Um, with these uh, interviews, it's uh, what you can do is the students ask students what they, well, you ask students what they want to know about their classmates summer. Okay, it might be following on from that uh, two truths and a lie. Okay, um, maybe some support from the teacher will be necessary. So, with um, questions, you may want to give some suggestions. Maybe even just with the wh words: where, who, when, see, mountains, best part, worst part, friends, birthday, things like that. That you know, um, suggest to students. You know, how can you make up a question from these ideas? Okay. Um, let us know in the chat if you think there are more topics that may be useful, some other questions. Okay. Um, uh, now the students in pairs need to write the full questions. Okay. I think it's often good to get students writing, working in pairs just so that they can uh, sort of correct each other. They give the, each other the, the chance to correct things or often they're a bit more... Um, uh, you know, the, um, it doesn't mean they have to have the same the pair. They could write, they could come up with five each, for example. Okay. Um, one thing that uh, someone also, who was it, uh, Chantel mentioned in the chat, um, it is very important that they're going to be using the past simple here. Okay? Um, Italian students often instinctually use the present perfect, I think, with the influence from Italian when they're um, asking people about finished events, but uh, they should certainly be the past simple if they're talking about the summer um, holidays when they're back at school. Okay? Um, you'll be circulating and monitoring. So, you know, 
checking what the questions are that students are going to be uh, asking, correcting their grammar a bit, correcting their vocabulary a bit. Okay? Then the differences, another thing they often uh, get confused about is the difference between what and which. Okay? It's um, also like a, an opportunity there to go around and kind of drill a little bit of pronunciation, like Italian students particularly have a problem with, with the phrase in the mountains. And so if, if they're going to be using that phrase again and again and again, you may want to you may want to drill the pronunciation with them a little bit. And also yeah, things like how we naturally say things like, would you like instead of would you like or where did you go? Where did you go? And not where yeah. did you go? Exactly. So I think uh, it, it can be a really good opportunity to uh, drill a bit of uh, question intonation too. Okay, um, remembering that uh, only the questions that, uh, you know, yes, no questions or questions that start with an auxiliary or a modal verb are the ones that are going to be going up with intonation. Otherwise, the intonation will probably be going down, okay, which is something that, uh, uh, you know, again, it's uh, a bit confusing for Italian students usually, saying that though Italian doesn't really work like that. and. You know, no doubt other languages too. Um, get the students, give the students some time. Okay, check, you know, your monitoring. So checking if they've um, done it. You know, I always think it's a good idea to give them a deadline. You know, no, don't just leave it open so that they have a deadline they're working to. You can always extend it if you need to. Okay? And so halfway through, you can say, okay, you should have three questions so far. Um, and then you can elicit the questions from the class. So, you, you know, every student can ask one question. Doesn't that mean they need to do it and get an answer, but you're just checking that they've got some questions, okay, and that they are correct and the intonation's good, okay? You can even, uh, you know, get one student to read them and then drill it with the whole class, okay? As I said, uh, you know, with the correct intonation. It's really, if they're going to be asking these questions repeatedly, it's very important that they're doing the correct intonation, given that it's effectively drilling them. Um, so once they have kind of conducted these interviews and they have um, got all this information, they can, these pairs can then be put into um, smaller groups in order to, to share the information uh, that they found out. Um, this is also a really good opportunity here to do some language input. And so it could be a review from the, from the previous year or language, some phrases that you know that you're gonna be introducing um, uh, uh, soon. Things like, for example, um, Josh and Kathy both went to the UK this summer. No one went to France. Only Sam went to Venice during the summer holidays. Uh, neither Georgia or Federica liked the uh, beach activities at their hotel. Both uh, Tom and Fred really enjoyed the food. And again, because we are doing pair work or group work, if you get the, all the students to, to swap groups many times, we are effectively drilling these phrases until they kind of become very, very natural to the students. Another thing that, that's important about this phase is that, um, you know, as teachers, sometimes we give the students an activity to do, you know, find out something from their partner, and then we're tempted to leave it at that, whereas I think it's really got to be followed through, you know, that they've got to report back. They, in that case, it really motivates them to actually do the work, you know, if they realise that they're answering, asking questions and then just writing them on a piece of paper and then that piece of paper either gets thrown out or never looked at again they're not going to have much motivation to do this in the future. So make sure that they're writing them down and that they can give you a summary of them later. Or as I think Kathy's going to say, maybe even turn it into a, uh, into a document. Yeah, mm. yeah this, ex this next exercise is quite, quite similar in, struct 
in structure to the last one in that the pairs are the, the students are working in pairs that they have to um, gain information from each other and that it has very little input from the from the teacher and so the idea here is a, a survey have in pairs fact, of roberta in the chat um mentioned this okay so i think nice. she's uh, nice. sorry where we were going with this yeah great so have pairs of students decide what data they want to collect and create a survey and that data could be for example um duration of holidays how people traveled um, where they went, the weather, costs, things like this. Give students time to go around and ask questions. And again, they are doing this in pairs. And so the idea is that they are deciding on the questions together in English, writing the questions in English, and then going around and, and communicating with, with other students, of course. In pairs, then they analyze the data and create some pie charts and some and some tables. So why why do we do this? Being able to analyze statistics is a great skill and leads nicely into working on writing essays or reports, which is something that we'll look at um, just a little bit later in this session. Yeah, in uh, things like the Cambridge exams, uh, you know, the higher levels of the Cambridge exams, and e and e even uh, well, Cambridge IELTS really rely on these sort of statistics and uh, graphs to 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 be able to be familiar with either interpreting them, but also uh, you know creating them. And so I think it's uh, going to be really useful. Sylvia said. Um, for a little approach too, so that's true as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Students get practice using these stat design tools, for example, Excel, but there are also so many applications that you can, that you can download on your phone. And these are really transferable skills because they, they are things that our students will be doing after school as they begin their, their, their career path. Mm, for sure. So once they have their pie charts and tables, you can introduce some language to talk about these stats. So they have kind of like analyzed and, and summarized in their pairs this information. And then we want to, them to be able to talk about, about this, th these stats, saying things such as the majority of those interviews had a beach style holiday. Most interviewees agreed that the weather was too hot this year. One third of participants traveled by car and two thirds by plane. Just over half spent more than two weeks away from home. A small percentage believed that eating out had become more expensive. Yeah, things like the words in bold there can be things that you could put up on the board okay, and they could, uh, you know, see if those correspond. Otherwise, you could go around and monitor and suggest you know, looking at their pie charts, maybe suggest what sort of language they could use. Yeah. Remember that you don't, they don't necessarily need to cover all of it. You know, one third of the, uh, just over half spent two weeks away from home. They don't necessarily need to talk about the other 40%. Yeah. So once they have an idea about the types of phrases that they want to share with another, with another pair, um, they would make small groups so that students can share their work and the teacher can go around helping students use the new phrases correctly. And so when they're just uh, talking with another student or in small groups, students are much more likely to, to be a bit more daring with their language than if you're, ask, if you're picking on a single student who has to use one of these phrases in front of the whole class, having not kind of practiced it a bit themselves. And that's why we do this kind of mini group work uh, at this stage. Mm. Uh, also, uh, in doing this, the teacher can go around and, and help them use them, use these phrases correctly or kind of um, encourage them to be a bit more daring in, the, in their use of, of English. Then introduce an introductory sentence for a report and give it to the students as a writing task. So we have engaged them in the in the topic, which is holidays, 
they have done their own research and they have their own statistics, their own data. So they are really, really uh, motivated and engaged before you've even given them the, uh, the writing task. An introductory, an introductory sentence could be something such as, this report is intended to outline to current summer holiday trends of this yeah, report is intended to outline current summer day summer holiday yeah, trends. Yeah, <laughs> Remember that again. No, sorry about that. Um, but uh, I think you know, obviously, we're we're showing you this as a holiday survey, but it could be adapted for anything really. So it could be used at any part of the year um, about other things apart from holidays. But um, you know, holidays is uh, a great topic. Always, I always look forward to my first lessons with students after the break so that we can, uh, you know, we've immediately got a topic to talk about. Yeah, any way that you can make a report writing just a little bit more interesting and more focused on, on their interests is great. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a lot of the reports, for example, in the exams, they're quite dry often the topics, okay, whereas, you know, at least they can get some practice first with the uh, reports that really represent true things that they've done the research themselves, not just inventing research. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next activity, this is a this is a nice one. And it goes back to, as Josh was saying, uh, something that, that comes up in these in these sessions quite a lot, which is making the classroom more uh, auton autonomous, as in giving the students more ownership over their of their own learning. So setting the tone for the school year. Why not give students more ownership of their learning? When we make them act actively part of their learning, they are bound to be more engaged. Let students think about what it is they want to improve and set their own goals. Now, they may need a little help with this if they've never done it before, because students aren't really used to thinking about short or long term goals within their own learning. So how can we help them with that? Firstly, engage. Ask students what they like doing in English outside of the classroom. That could be something like playing video games, watching films, discussing things in online forums. Secondly, reflect and collect ideas. Perhaps, they had the opportunity to use English during the summer holidays. What were they doing? Making new friends, asking for help, ordering food. Now, these two stages are really, really important because it, it's getting them to think about how what they learn in the classroom is really important in their lives outside of school. Then we set the intentions. So ask students, what they expect from themselves this year and what they want to achieve. And these might be short-term goals, such as within the next month. They might be long-term goals within, uh, within the, 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 the academic year. This can be done in a diary form to refer to. So they may, may have a diary at the, at the back of their workbooks. Um, and they are referring to that midterm or at the end of the year. Or it could be something much more informal, like post-it notes. So every student is given a post-it note. They write their intention or goal on that post-it note and everybody sticks them on one wall. Mm. That way the students can go around and, and read the other goals and intentions and also, you know, motivate themselves through other people's uh, goals yeah, and intentions sure. a little bit. So some of those things that they might be saying, uh, I want to be able to watch films without using subtitles. This month, I will be focusing on getting better at asking questions. By the end of the year, I will have read a novel in English. Yeah, so these are sort of, again, some forms that you could put there. I want to be able to, okay, they could finish this. Remember, even if you've got lower level students, you know, give them the framework to do it. Put up a lot of that vocabulary there, um, the expressions, and they just need to complete them. You know, whereas higher level students could maybe, uh, you know, create them themselves. You know, you could uh, uh, look at it. Even if uh, you can tie this in maybe 
when you're teaching things like, uh, you know, to be able to, or, you know, this future perfect we have will have red. Okay? So that could be uh, quite useful. Okay? Um, yeah, and there's a lot to be said for learning chunks of language. Like you don't necessarily have to explain the grammar behind this. They just they just learn it as a chunk of language. Mm. Uh, by yeah. the end of the year, I will have read. By the end of the month, I will have done. And and they learn it as that chunk. They don't question why it's that way, and and then it's it's memorized. To be honest, I found that that's quite true. Is that uh, something like the future perfect? There, when you explain it as the future perfect, you know, it'll confuse the students. You know, oh God, we've we've just done present perfect. It's past perfect. Now we found out there's a future perfect too. But something like I will have read a novel in English, I think most students, you know, Italian students of, uh, you know, even after A2 level will understand that because it's it's very similar to how you say it in Italian. Okay? And, you know, again, for anyone joining us from other countries and uh, other languages too, you know, it's, it's not necessary. While it is quite advanced English, it's not necessarily hard to understand. And therefore, if you give them that, that, that block of language, they can just uh, finish the, uh, the end. I will have what will you yeah. have done. Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, great for future tenses. Okay. Um, just a little bit of a fun thing. A couple of people in the chat were saying about um, uh, having lower level students obviously some of these activities may not be appropriate for lower level students i don't know if they'd be doing writing reports or surveys but you know um you can always adapt these and some of the follow-on activities may not be uh you can leave out if you've got younger students something like this might be fun okay we've got a uh, video here from a uh a film maybe you've seen it it's a little bit old now but billy madison right um a film about a uh well in fact uh, you could even play this video and see if they can speculate what the film's about okay um maybe some of them have seen it but it's probably a bit old for a lot of young students now okay um and then how would they feel if they were the student okay so we'll have a look at it just a couple of minutes and uh see what you think hopefully you'll be able to hear it okay Back to school, back to school, to prove to dad that I'm not a fool. I got my lunch packed up, my boots tied tight. I hope I don't get in a fight. Oh, back to school, back to school, back to school. Well, here goes nothing. Okay, so just a brief thing. So um, I don't know if you've seen the film. In fact, I haven't. But uh, no, I haven't. Well, I haven't seen it either. But I do want to watch it now. <laughs> um, but you know, you can speculate on what the situation is. Why is a grown man going back to school? Um, what's going to happen when he gets in there? Okay? Um, you could, uh, if you've got students of, you know, B1, B2 level, maybe they could do the second conditional chain, okay? If I were him, I would, okay? If this happened, I would do this, okay? Um, this might be quite fun, okay? Um, you could even get students to write a continuation of the scene, okay? What happens when he arrives in class? What does someone say? What would... How would they react if a student, uh, uh, you know, Adam Sandler, this, uh, you know, I don't know how old he is there in his tw early 20s or mid 20s, um, came into the class and uh, started participating in the class? You know, they could write the script and maybe even act it out in class. You know? Even um, with those really lower levels, you could you could act it out in class because even setting up the scene and asking them, okay, so. What things do you need in the classroom? 
make a list of all the things or find the things and then and then you know easy bits of speech just short short little utterances possible yeah and uh i think what you can do also is um as students nowadays digital natives they can make it in per video hey you know i think those sort of things now even acting it out in class they can even uh make a little short video you you know that your students are pretty familiar with things like TikTok and all of those, so they can edit it and uh, you know show a little video for um, how it would work. If it's in the classroom, I mean, it's you know you don't really need a, a studio there. You've got the classroom at your disposal. And and students do react really really well to that. They're so used to you know using their phones and being able to show the teacher that they can like edit a video. Uh, they they do enjoy it. Mm, things like that, I think you know, making as people a lot of people make TikToks. God, you know, if they can make them in English, they're going to get a lot, lot more followers. So. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, another thing you can do here is uh, make a school news report. Mm -hmm. right? we did a similar thing in uh, in uh, um, using journalism and. Uh, in one of our other web, web uh, webinars, but uh, in the headlines, you can get students to write a newspaper report. So you know, um, even if it, you know, if you wanted to get more involved, they could draw it, and make it into a school newspaper. But maybe they could uh, write a school a short report about something newsworthy that happened in the neighbourhood or in town, or even somewhere they went they, during the summer. Okay, so uh, it could be real, it could be imaginary. So, you know, students who say, you know, uh, nothing interesting happened. I know, I think we all know these sort of students too. You know, you ask them about their summer and they say nothing happened. I went away, it was boring. You know, they don't want to talk about it. Encourage them to, to invent something, you know. Uh, it could involve interviews with other students, you know, so they could... Uh, uh, do a video. You could even say they have to write a report as if they were a journalist interviewing another person. So they interview the other student about something that went on. Okay. Um, it could be submitted as a written task. We in the handout that you'll get, uh, it has this blank sheet. The the space at the top is there for them to draw a picture. Okay. Or you know, if they want to do it digitally, they could even find a picture and put it on. Um, We've got a webinar that's on the YouTube page uh, that uh, you can see using news in the classroom. And we actually uh, went into in a bit of depth about writing a news report. Okay, so how you can, uh, what sort of language you can use, um, some ideas for, for the, um, things that you need to incorporate into the news reports. But, uh, you know, something like that could be great. Um, just to finish off, I thought we might include a little poem that uh, a nice little poem I found that uh, not only could be presented to your students, but uh, even students, it could be used as a spur for students to actually continue this theme. I think you see it. Okay. Um, this is called The Teacher's Day in Bed by David Orme. I don't think it's he's a famous poet, as far as I know, but uh, so, um, it's quite a nice little poem. I'll read it to you, it's there though, but uh, our teacher's having a day in bed. She sent her pets to school instead. There's a parrot to read the register, a crocodile to sharpen the pencils, a canary to teach singing, an adder to teach maths, an octopus to make the ink, an elephant to hoover the floor, an electric eel to make the computer work, a giraffe to look for trouble at the back, a tiger to keep order at the front. A reed bunting, can't you guess? To help with reading, of course. A secretary bird to run the office. A piranha fish to give swimming lessons. Glad I'm off swimming today. A zebra to help with crossing the road. Oh, and a dragon to cook the sausages. I bet that none of you ever knew just how many things a teacher can do. Okay. A little thing there to let you know all you know that, that we're quite needed okay um let the students know all the things we do i think uh might be fun even to see if they can extend it 
Okay, what other animals could they get to do it? Maybe you yeah, can that's even, a nice uh, idea. take out little parts. Okay, you can take out some of the animals and they have to put the animals in there. Okay, or take out the activities that the animals do. Okay, just to remind you, everything we you've been reading there, um, including this poem and including the uh, um, the examples we gave, uh, are in the handout. So. Um, you know, you should receive that soon. Okay. I don't use kind of like poem and, and song enough in the classroom, but like students do do really enjoy it. Mm. And there's something like this, you know, we're, we're not teaching it as a piece of literature as much as just something fun. And, uh, you know, sometimes these sort of poems, songs can be a great spur for students to uh, continue, you know, what other animals can do certain things? What would it... What would uh, they be doing in gym? What animal would be good for football? What would be good mm. for volleyball? What ones would be good for science or geography? Okay? Things like that. Okay? Um, just to wind up, okay, um, every holiday, whether we're talking about summer or coming up the Christmas uh, holidays, it gives uh, an opportunity to get students speaking about their own experiences. Okay? This is the language they need, you know, this is the language that they'll be using, that they're, they're, you know, this is what the students will be asking each other in Italian, you know, when they see each other for the first time these weeks, okay? So, you know, if you can give this equivalent language in English, then uh, it's going to be very useful for them, okay? And uh, also, you know, it, it will demonstrate whether they've been paying attention in class, okay, if they can remember something from last year. Coming back to school is a new start, a moment to start well and set boundaries, as well as welcome students to a class that they should look forward to participating in. If you set the tone well, even shy and withdrawn students can find a space to bloom. So these, you know, the first few days of school are really, really important for, for that, for kind of creating an environment that is enjoyable and, and friendly and, and safe for the students. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, something we always should do is use students' curiosity about their new classmates, their teacher, classmates' holidays, whatever other students have, um, you know, differences between their families, their friends, yeah. their, their after-school activities. Yeah, um, like it's a golden them. rule, really, isn't it? The more relevant, the more memorable the language Exactly. You know, it, it's all very well to go through and, real question forms and we get them to do repeat questions that they find in the book but you know it, it's not really productive language until you actually get them um, making their own questions and you know paying attention to to the answers okay so that the students are not only creating the questions but they're hearing the questions for the first time okay. nice i did like uh, roberta in the chat that we could take the animals out of that poem and uh, use students' names. <laughs> okay? So students, each student has a role in the classroom. So that's that a great idea. And there. then those are the rules for the rest for the rest of the year. They choose their their task and keep to it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, as we said before, we've um, got lots of great ideas, and uh, we'll be soon publicising. Uh, you know, some more that we're going to put on. But uh, let us know in the chat if you have ideas that you would like us to to touch on this year. Okay, we uh, have some ideas and some things planned, but uh, we're certainly open to new ideas. Okay, please let us know in the chat or you can always email us. Okay, um, thanks for your attention. And as I said, uh, you should receive a certificate of participation um, and a handout very soon. If you don't get it, send an email to me at uh, Formazione and I'll get that out to you very soon. Okay? Um, these are weekly webinars. So next week will be uh, at the same time, Thursday at 6 p.m. And uh, we're going to be talking about Quill, okay? so uh, content language integrating learning. Okay? So this is uh, about teaching other subjects such as science, history, maths, even uh, physical education or things like that in English. So uh, tune in next week and uh, I'll be joined by another colleague, uh, Becky, and 
uh, we'll be talking about uh, Lil Gay, or she'll be presenting it mostly. Okay. Thanks a lot for your uh, attendance, and I really hope uh, a lot of people keep attending our webinars. Uh, yeah, us... and if you do use any of these uh, activities, uh, you know, feel free to let us know how it went. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah, please let us know. It's always, uh, you know, we really hope that we're, um, uh, these, these are actually being used in class, okay? and uh, let us know about uh, future ideas. Okay? Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks once again. Kathy. Okay. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.